Hello, I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and today we're going to talk about the neurotransmitter dopamine and the other two catecholamines, norepinephrine and epinephrine. Do you have symptoms such as a loss in interest in the hobbies that you used to love? Do you notice that you have road rage when you're driving or anger towards yourself or others at the drop of a hat? Do you have poor mental focus, concentration, and are you unable to pay attention to tasks? Well, all of these could be signs of a deficiency in dopamine, norepinephrine, and or epinephrine. And these are serious things because dopamine is important in brain function in, in the central nervous system as well as norepinephrine and epinephrine. And all three of them are also important peripherally in the rest of the body outside of the nervous system. Now, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine function in the peripheral nervous system to um, support the sympathetic response, the fight or flight response in your body. So increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure when you are under stress. Dopamine in the central nervous system supports the brain reward cascade. So feelings of reward and motivation are what dopamine contribute to as well as muscle coordination and personality. The catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine in the brain contribute to the ability to concentrate and focus and pay attention to things. So if you have a deficiency in any of these, it's going to impact your life on a broad scale. So I just want to go through the pathway on how these are created today and help you understand that your nutrition and your lifestyle may be leading to the deficiencies. And the medical treatment of these things are medications. So um, dopamine antidepressants will be given to people who have a dopamine deficiency and are having that depression and hatred towards themselves and anger. Um, for catecholamines, children and people with ADD and ADHD are given stimulants and amphetamine drugs to help them concentrate and pay attention when there are natural ways to support this. So let's look at the dopamine pathway first. The essential amino acid phenylalanine is the start of the pathway of dopamine creation. So if we put phenylalanine out here, what needs to happen is phenylalanine is consumed in your diet or by supplementation or however you get it in. And phenylalanine goes to the liver and in the liver phenylalanine is converted to the non-essential acid tyrosine. Now it's a non-essential acid because it can be made but it is an essential acid to your brain because an essential amino acid to your brain because your brain cannot create tyrosine. So it needs to be made in the liver and then brought into the brain. Now one thing that you must understand is that dopamine, epinephrine and norepinephrine in the periphery cannot cross the blood-brain barrier by themselves to enter the brain. So we need to have mechanisms that allow that to happen. So at this step here, phenylalanine converting the liver to tyrosine, the tyrosine at this step can create dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine peripherally by heading down to the adrenal medulla. And the adrenal medulla will use the tyrosine to create the norepinephrine, dopamine, and epinephrine. And they will have their peripheral effects from there. But in order to get the dopamine to be created in the brain, tyrosine has to enter the brain. And in order for tyrosine to enter the brain, you have to have a healthy, proper insulin response. You have to have carrier molecules. And if you have these two things, then tyrosine can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain. Once inside the brain, the tyrosine will become dopa. I'm sure you've heard of the term L-dopa for drugs that they give for Parkinson's and other dopamine deficiencies or dopamine dysfunction disorders. Well, in the brain, for the tyrosine to be converted to dopa, you need a couple things. You need oxygen, which is carried by iron, and you need folate. 
So those are three cofactors that you need for the enzyme to work to convert tyrosine to DOPA in the brain. And then the final step is to convert DOPA to dopamine. And the, the nutrient that is required for the enzymatic process to convert DOPA to dopamine is called pyridoxal 5-phosphate or vitamin B6. So this is your dopamine pathway from phenylalanine to the end stage of dopamine created in the brain to allow you to have that reward sensation when you eat something that you like or when you're with someone you love or when you exercise in order to get that feel good, that reward you have to have dopamine. Um, something as simple as eating chocolate to feel that reward you have to have dopamine. Now um, to take dopamine and to create catecholamines in the brain, dopamine is a precursor. So to get to norepinephrine and epinephrine in the brain, we first have to be able to create dopamine. If we can't get here, we're not going to get the other catecholamines. So this is a crucial process. And any lack of nutrient somewhere along the pathway, you're not going to get there, and then you're not going to get to the other catecholamines. So the next step from dopamine is going to be the production or creation of norepinephrine, okay? And in order to create norepinephrine, the cofactors needed are copper, iron, copper and iron, okay? So metals and vitamin C. So if you know anything about iron metabolism, iron and vitamin C are closely related and can support each other or contradict each other depending on what your body's levels are. So those are the core factors that take dopamine to norepinephrine. And the final step to get norepinephrine down to epinephrine is a, a substance called SAM-E. This is a methyl donor called SAM-E. Okay? So for you to be able to feel good about yourself, to be motivated to do things, to get reward from eating things that you like or hanging with people you like or exercising the way you like, you have to be able to produce dopamine. In order to concentrate and focus and have cognitive ability, you have to have epinephrine and norepinephrine. To have a proper stress response, fight or flight response, you have to have all of these things. So what I'm here to tell you today is if you're lacking vitamin C, deficient vitamin C, you're not going to have the catecholamines downstream. If you're lacking B vitamins, you are not going to have dopamine or the catecholamines. If you can't regulate your blood sugar, if you have poor blood sugar regulation and a poor insulin response, you will never get tyrosine into the brain to create dopamine or the other catecholamines. So all of these things could be due to a blood sugar issue for you. And all the antidepressants in the world are not going to help you if blood sugar is the reason that you can't produce dopamine and feel good about yourself or you can't produce the catecholamines and focus and concentrate at your job or with your kids or in whatever thing that you are doing. So if you, are, if you have a neurotransmitter imbalance, you have depression, you can't focus, you have ADD, ADHD, and you're looking for a way to support yourself and get healthy without being on drugs, well then we need to look at your lifestyle, we need to test you and look at your health and look for deficiencies in any of these vitamin cofactors and or uh, nutritional issues like blood sugar regulation issues with insulin surges or lack of insulin. So I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm here to help you achieve your goals and get to the cause of your problem and help you solve it. Have a great day.